Hey everyone, it's Connor here from VirtualizeMe.tv. Uh, today I'm really going to expand on a presentation I did at VForum 2016, which is all about governance uh, and cloud brokerage. But most importantly, it's about what we can do through uh, ASD forms or what are known as uh, XAS forms over the current out of the box forms. Because let's be honest, they're quite rubbish in VRA7. So let's walk through that and I will also show how it's done along as we go along through it. So let's have a look. So first off, let's have a look at you know something that someone would demo. Uh, this would be templates and might be this one. Let's have a look. I haven't run through this, so I haven't pre-created anything. Okay, so this is something that someone would demo and go, yeah, look, we request this. Yeah, we select our thing, great. And we hit submit. Okay, cool. Um, they might even go, okay, we can do, you know, let's go good old trusty Dukes Bank because everyone uses Dukes Banks to, to, to demo how awesome it is. There's nothing to enter. Everything's already been pre-filled out and you just hit submit and away you go. All right, cool. But let's look at an actual real world. Like this is enterprises that are going to be building and offering capability up to their users and they're going to want choice, they're going to want option, they want to be able to input data into these things. So even if we just look at a very simple Here we go. So you're going to be looking at something more like this. And this is being pretty tame. Is in, you know, that would probably look a bit nicer than this, but we would have, you know, the application, what the application was that we're deploying. Do we want it available on weekends? Do we have a code we want to enter? Uh, on behalf of uh, which domain are we putting it in? Do we want always available? No. We've got a startup time. We got, oh, do we want it in a hardened group policy or not? No. Do we want a uh, different environment? The role of the server? Shutdown time. Then we'd probably want server settings. Um, for the application, then, and this is just one server, so you can see this is like rubbish. Uh, unfortunately, whoever thought this would be a great UI was um, definitely on something that day. Uh, so this is just a very small taste of what customers want and what people want in there, and you know. It, it gets to a point where you're trying to limit how much data you want to put in here because it can get unwieldy, uh, especially if you've got an application that, say, has six different boxes in there or with multiple software components all having inputs. Uh, it's actually quite messy. So let's have a look. at another way we can do it. Now, what I want to run through really quickly is the eyes forms. So, let's take for example, we do a vSphere machine. We request. So, previously we saw the standard eyes form uh, that we had and you know it wasn't too crash hot and the out of the box permissions in VRA like they're all right but they can get pretty unwieldy especially if you want you know more fine grain controlled now we've had to add in obviously permissions and other governance uh, uh, across a lot of different customers 
But this, this is one aspect. So here we're going to see project code. So project code, just think of project code as a, a bucket of money for spending. So it's it's something that we're allowed that, you know, most organizations will generally spend money based on a project or they have money allocated to BAU. Now, uh, a project, uh, especially with public cloud and, and other things, it's, it's very hard to track the money spent. Uh, there's no real one tool out there that can do it. Um, and even VRB does a great job until you go to public cloud. Uh, and then it, you know, it comes short in some areas. But here we can sort of bundle this all in. Uh, and this is a great thing about VRA, is that it's able to break out of the box uh, with its deep integration with VRO. So as we can see here, we've got a project code. So just think of project code as a pre-allocated, pre-approved bucket of money. So we allocate a person, an AD account, an AD group uh, to this project or multiple AD groups to this project. And anyone within that particular group is able to provision on behalf of the project. So we could, for instance, give this vSphere uh, machines item available to everyone. But if you don't put a project code in there, if you're not eligible for a project code, you, you can't go any further. So for instance, I've got a couple here, but I'll just pick one. It'll tell me what it's for, how much funds I've got. So this is another thing, like as I provision machines or start eating out of my funds, uh, it can be as granular as you want to make it. So let's just say that, let me go next. Go request, how many machines, how long do I want the lease duration for? Cool. I'll just leave it as one, one and one for now. Machine, so domain. So again, a project code, we can link that to domains and platforms as well. So uh, this project can only deploy into these domains. And because this is an XS form, based on the choices that we make on prior form items, we can then intelligently choose or give drop downs based on the answers that have been selected. So let's, uh, I've only got one domain in my lab. Look at that, I want security hardening, so that's something to do with group policy. Not everyone would have something like that. Uh, then we have the machine. Now we can have, you know, standard tests. Like, you know, we might have test images and based on the project code, which might be a BAU or automation one, we want to be able to see test ones because we're testing new images. But for now, we'll just go standard. I'll choose my image. I'll choose my cores. Memory. So this could also be done in T-Search sizing if you really wanted to. And it is for AWS, and I'll run through the AWS one as well. Go application. I'll just choose that. And environment. Now availability. Now going into public cloud for vSphere, it doesn't matter so much. But in public cloud, you get paid for as long as these things are running. Sorry, you get paid. You get charged for as long as these things are running. So why have them running overnight if you don't need them? So this allows um, people to self-service and manage their funds appropriately. So for this, I'll have it manual, which means that it'll create it. At 7 o'clock, it will shut it down uh, at night. But then the next morning, it won't actually power it on. I'd have to come in and here and power it on myself. And again, this is all done through VRO on a schedule or policy. Uh, if I was to select 7 o'clock, it means in the morning it would power on at 7 o'clock for me automatically before I even come into work. So it's all ready for me. Uh, if I do weekends, yes, means that it will actually power it on at 7 o'clock on the weekends. Um, but if I select no, it will power it off on Friday at 7 o'clock here, and it wouldn't actually power it on till uh, 7 o'clock Monday morning. I could just go I want it 24-7, which in this case I'll do. Uh, additional storage, yeah sure, we can add extra volumes, it's all it's all done there, I don't want to actually go through it, but that, we can add additional network interfaces, and additional, so request numbers, cost centers, anything additional that you might want to have, and we can hit the old submit button, and away it goes. 
So very similar, if we go to uh, AWS, for instance, we can see the project code, I can choose that, but then it goes, oh, that platform of this catalog item, AWS, is not selected for that project code. So I can go, but I can't actually do it. So this, you know, everyone's got their favourites. You know, people like Xbox, they like Playstations, like 4, they like Holden, they like, they, you know, they have their favourites. AWS, Azure, vSphere, AWS, OpenStack. Um, and this way, the business can choose where the project can deploy their services. Uh, and it's based on, you know, a business decision. It might be cheaper there. You know, Azure, you might have MSDN licensing, so you want to deploy all lower level stuff for a particular project to Azure. Uh, or you might want, you know, you're working on Linux builds, you think they work better in AWS, you might want to put them there, or you have things that are running 24-7 and they're quite large and they're actually financially viable on on-prem vSphere. So this gives the business the control and you're, you're not inhibiting the users or the devs uh, in them to be able to stand up their services, you're just saying, well, this is where you can stand it up, instead of the devs choosing, because they'll choose their favourite, the one they like to work with, just like anyone. So this one, let's choose one that will actually work. Yep. I go through, same thing, I'll just choose the instance um, gives me the size yep awesome and I'll just choose my application availability storage yeah I don't really care about any up oh, and go back we can actually choose availability zones if we want to so you know we you can put in little extra things based on the uh, platform that you're putting it to and submit and then we can have a look at like even Azure, for example. So by doing this way, we've actually maintained consistency. They look the same, no matter which environment we've gone to. There's slight differences depending on where it is. So we've got role. Choose the size. Oh, eight goals and twenty eight, that's gonna be big. Uh yep. Yeah. Availability, storage, interface, additional info, and we've got a debug here. We'd hit submit for that. I don't want to build one that big. Uh and you know, same thing for OpenStack. And OpenStack, we've got oh. Put that in. We've got a real server there. And choose our flavor. Sweet. Go in and the same things. So that's really great. But let's have a look at the whole life cycle here. So I'll log in here as not myself, but Jay Smith, which is the one I demoed at VForum. Um, if I remember their password. So, if I actually have a look in here, we look at IaaS, and let's just go through the um, AWS. So, we see the projects. We've got 2008, which is a 2008 upgrade project. And we've got Elasticsearch. Let's add another one um, and actually go through the thing. So let's cancel that. Now, again, these are all done through Xs, which is really great. And project management. So we want to create a new project. And this would be given to project managers, a financial area, whoever it is. Everything's controlled through VRA. So let's go. Demo project code is five five six seven uh, six four. 
Now, platforms allowed. Uh, they can go to vSphere and Zua. And allowed domains. If we had more domains, we could choose there. Managers. Uh, I'll make myself a manager. So this is all grad from AD. Funding, they can have $1,250. Expiration, it's because, you know, financial years and whatnot. Let's just give, we've got a month to spend that. Now, project groups. So these are AD groups or AD users. Uh, so let's just go uh, for J Smith. Yep. And allow projects provision. So this basically means that when we reach zero dollars, are they allowed to keep on provisioning? So in some cases, it might be yes because it's critical, uh, but in other cases, no. And it means that their machines won't power on in the morning and they won't be able to build anymore. So it uh, allows you to really... Uh, tighten the reins with your spend. So let's go, nope. Submit. Alright, now, and obviously I could go in, I could edit projects, like well, that 2008 one. We could move the allowed platforms over, the allowed domains. We could remove groups, uh, do all that sort of day two operations, which is great. We can also withdraw funds and add funds uh, to projects. Now, submitted. It's running. So on the back end of this, I'm using a key value store, etcd information. Um, I don't know if it's currently up. So this is sort of the top levels, but where we're looking right there is in the IaaS. Then we've got every virtual machine that we deploy, uh, information with it. There'll probably be a whole bunch in unprovisioned. Uh, we've got rate cards, we've got projects, so our active projects. We've got environment management, we've got our platforms uh, and all the information that goes along with them. We've got our custom naming with uh, what's being done. Uh, AWS, we've got instance types in there. So this is how we drive a lot of the forms and we have things on the back end that are running and updating these. Uh, it allows for a lot better user end user experience. Uh, and also we've got the information there to link day two operations and etc. with it. So it's really, really powerful uh, when you want to use it. And let's see if this is actually, um, Done. Oh, my device failed. It's all right. Um, so that's done. So if I go into chain, yeah. Actually, I'm just interested in why that failed. Uh, not her. Doop -a doop doop. Probably, ah, oh, my key pair exists. Yeah, okay, that's annoying error, that one. I haven't put my uh, certificate in there for the key. That's all right. Um, where were we? So back to here. So now, if we go back to our catalog item, well, we've got our eyes. We go create a diverse machine. Now we should have our new project code. There it is that we just put in before, which is great. But we said it can only go to Azure or vSphere. And voila, we can't go any further. YouTube demo, we've been getting 250. All right, damn, I'm gonna have to uh, uh, go something else. So, you know, let's go vSphere then. 
choose our project code. And then we go through, you know, we want a 20 day lease on it. We want four machines. We want this domain. We want CINOS. We want one core and that. So application, oh, uh, application, so we can put in an application, but we won't in this instance. A web server. So that, I should say that that application actually makes up the name of the machine. Uh, in this instance, now you don't always have to do it that way, but you know, it's great to be able to derive a lot of information out of what people have selected. So then you don't have additional, you know, useless fields in there that you don't really need. There we go through that. Yeah, that one additional one. We hit submit on that. Great. All right. So that's submitting. Now, as me, I could go, no, that my application doesn't suit. So I could go into catalog uh, and I get application management. So this might be, you know, whoever's in charge of your applications. We can create one and we can go, you know, maybe it's uh, WebSphere or something. Oh, that's not how you spell sphere. And uh, we might go, uh, I don't know, that'll do. And then we go application code, we don't need, and configure local groups. Nope. So local groups is just so uh, like a something else that I was working, that we're working on uh, that uh, creates your, your rights. So it automatically creates group policies and a group uh, to go into local admins. So the people requesting this have access to the machines they're provisioning. Makes sense. Submit. All right. So that'll go in. Hopefully, uh, that will shouldn't take too long. Then we can go back to Jane and have a uh, submit another one. Okay, cool. Now we go back in our eyes. And if we went to this time, let's just do Azure. Actually, let's just do another web sphere. We find that it's creating a whole bunch. See, uh, it's creating a name for us uh, and it's automatically keeping the dynamic provisioning. And that's all done again uh, through. Actually, it's not there. Where are they? Through here. So it keeps the next available number, whatever it is. Ah, which is really good. Anyway, uh, getting sidetracked there. Let's go in here. I've got a new project. Uh, that'll do. Machine, image, calls one and one oh two four. Application. There's our web sphere, and we'll go our test server environment. Yeah, that'll do. Let's move that, and I'll spit out a web server one. Now. Uh, let's have a quick look at something slightly different. So this is taking it to another level. You're sure we've got, you know, there you go, AWS, um, OpenStack, vCloud Air, vCloud Director, vSphere, and they all work from a lab, by the way, which is uh, uh, pretty great. I need, I think there's a couple others that, you know, if I get the time, I'll, I would like to have all the endpoints in there at one stage. Uh, but these are really great to have and available, but obviously, you know, going in, we're, we're selecting exactly what it is, and we're not really sure, unless we've been told specifically what we're allowed to 
platform we're allowed to deploy on. So let's take it to another level. Instead of offering all them, how about just offer one? You know, that sounds pretty good, right? So let's call it maximum effort here. Uh, the old Deadpool. So we have this, we can pick our project code. So this is the project code that I created for Jane. We'll select that. And then we can select our platform. So it'll only give us the platforms that we're allowed to provision to based on when we created the project. So in this instance, I can go Azure. Then it'll change it to Microsoft Azure. It tells us how much funds we've got left. And then we can go through our normal uh, provisioning process. Uh, family, which is pretty sweet. Nope, nope, nope. Smit. Done. You know, that's pretty cool. So if we go if we go back to my old uh, super user here, go to maximum effort, we can see that you know we pull up I think it's this one's got access to all. And we've got all of them there. We can go AWS, we can go OpenStack, we can go vCloud Air, VCD, and it makes the forms come alive. Uh, so this is this is really cool stuff, uh, and we'll, we'll have a quick look at how this happens. Now I won't be able to go into the absolute detail because obviously I use a lot of stuff like etcd uh, as well as a lot of other tools on the back end uh, but let's have a quick look here so in general you know it's not this is just the vsv1 uh, for example and if we were to launch this through here uh, the v in our virilize orchestrator it takes a bit more time to do it but you see we've got the same uh, requests here. Now, the best thing to do, like, let's just go back to VRA here and let's have a look at the design. Uh, XAS, XAS blueprints. Uh, let's look at create vSphere blueprint form. So this is the, I guess, the form designer. Now, what's really great is if you do all your form presentation within VRO, the majority of that will actually come through uh, into VRA. Now, there's a few little things that don't, but the great thing about this is if I was to if I was to come in here and I did all the form design stuff within here, which you can do, uh, and it works very well, you would... Um, if you change an input and you go up and you hit this nice little button here, which is to rebuild, you'd lose all your formatting. Uh, which you know you could you could spend hours doing it on one uh, form. So you know it's if you do that through VRO, then there's you know just a few things like read only. I'd have to go in here and I'd do you know project funds. Uh, I'd have to come in here and go read only yes, and that's something that doesn't come through on uh, uh, Vero, uh, but most of the other stuff does and we can see there's our different pages there.
So... Cancel that. And we'll have a look in VRO. So this is under the presentation tab. So this is everything within that presentation and we can see the project. So we go project code. So what we use is called OGNL. Um, so it's pretty much gimped in uh, VRO. Now I believe back in uh, the early days of Virilize Orchestrator or vCenter Orchestrator as it was then, uh, it was uh, had full-blown cap OGNL capability but it's been left in there to really all you can do is call actions and do some predefined elements and stuff like that. So as we can see here that we're calling this action, we're getting the um, we're then passing the username so that's the user that's doing the requesting and the instance, this is the SCD instance, so this is only for uh, uh, this implementation here. Uh, but this uh, basically goes, okay, this is my username. So that goes off and calls that action. That action then goes and grabs the user, checks to see uh, what groups in that in goes and goes and checks all the projects, uh, checks to see what groups and checks to see if the user is a member of those groups or if the user is uh, being put it directly into any of those groups. And then we'll spit out a list. And that's the list that we see in the drop down of what they're allowed. So it's all AD driven uh, through this VRO flow. Um, and then we go, uh, obviously, the uh, validate the project platform. So again, it goes to the projects. And it hides the parameter until there's a code put in. So then once the code's put in, it'll then go and grab the uh, run another action, which goes and grabs the all the project codes and checks to see uh, which platforms are it's valid to be able to put into. Uh, and again, then it grabs out of that project, out of uh, the key value store etcd, and then grabs all the information like the, the amount of money is it, money it has and the name of it. Then we move on to request where we can have obviously number of machines that's all very basic uh, out of the box stuff. Uh, fully quantified, yeah, it, again it just goes and grabs uh, based on the username uh, and the domains, goes and grabs that. Then we can have uh, the machine type, uh, goes and grabs some machines and then yeah that's you know I'm not going to go through it uh, I'll be here for for hours but you can see that we use it very heavily with actions to grab our list of elements now we're using AD we're using key value store we're using uh, VRA itself uh, there's, there's lots of different things that's going off and grabbing uh, we did originally have when it was going to grab like the uh, the images uh, that are available uh, from AWS or uh, Azure or the machine types is that took quite a long time uh, to pull down live and I think the, the machines from Azure even using PowerShell or anything like that uh, took about 20 minutes to pull down the entire list of all the uh, uh, inbuilt uh, machines that you could provision from. So in that case, we actually, you know, we run a thing on a regular basis, which will go and poll, but then it'll pull the data down locally. So that essentially like a cached version that we're able to uh, grab and you get that really good user experience out of it. Uh, and then, yeah, finally, we go through requests. So all of these will be these settings, the default values, the uh, parameters, the defined list of elements, and these particular pages that are put through, they all get pushed through when we add this XS uh, into VRA, and there's very little management that we need to do. Anyway, uh, that's really it on 
excess and I guess what we've uh, how to improve the out of the box form form to make it a lot more user friendly uh, and obviously a lot more a lot more interactive uh, being able to add additional governance in there uh, so you can control spend you can control where people are placing or spending your money uh, as a business and it also you know it, it gives us something to report on we're able to uh, grab that data and other data and we were able to say you know why are you building your machines this size why are you leaving your machines on 24 7 do you require it uh, etc so you know it, it we found that uh, doing excess forms like this uh, is extremely beneficial to the business businesses uh, that uh, have adopted it and the other thing is that the users find it a lot more user friendly. Uh, I can't tell you how many times um, people have almost table flipped uh, because of the out of the box forms, uh, especially when you have uh, a blueprint that has 26 machines on it with over 100 software components. Uh, it, it, you can't expect people to go through that. Uh, so, you know, that's where obviously doing it through API uh, or wrapping the whole thing with an XS, uh, especially if you're able to derive a lot of the answers or the, a lot of the inputs that are required from, you know, only a couple uh, or you have to repeat the inputs. So anyway, that's it for this time. Uh, catch you later. Cheers, bye.